Viewer discretion is advised. filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. We're out in the city of Boynton Beach, also known as Paradise. Been here a little bit over four years. It's a nice, quiet city. Every once in a while, we get our little string of violent crimes. There's a good amount of street-level drug trafficking going on. Um, just like any other small city. We're going to try to catch up to this vehicle. Just ran the stop sign. Uh, he's been circling the area suspiciously. These residential back roads are really commonplace for street level drug trafficking. They like to stay off the main roads and avoid police. Bro, I want blackmail. Northwest 4th Street, 1100 block. Northbound, wearing black tank top, black shorts. Channel warning. I'm here in Northwood 4th Street. All units, 1031. I just heard a door open and close in one of these backyards. Let me see your hands! Get your hands up! Let me see them! Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Don't you move. You understand me? Northbound. Unit on 4th Street. Back up. I got him detained. Just don't move. Put your hands behind your back. Yeah, hey, I'm in a backyard dispatch. I'm trying to get that for you. Stand by. Turn over on your back. Sit up. Get up, ready? One, two, three. Okay. Is there anything back there that you needed? Uh, every other unit can slow down. I'll need for code three. Have a seat right here. Hmm? Have a seat. Right in front of 611. What are you running for, boss? Northwest. Nothing? We just saw my You weren't running? Uh, you just... Huh? Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about? Stand up for me. 10-4. Just a simple traffic stop, Bo. 10-4. Just jumped out of a car. Where's your car at? Oh, should be right in front. In the driveway. Charlie's with it, huh? All right. Do you want to tell me why you ran? You have a warrant, something silly? Suspend a license? I just seen y'all. Adrian? Yeah. There's no line about it. You run if it was over name something name. silly. You run the name, man. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Cut. Who's got a cage around here? Cut. Just put him in the car, uh, please. I'm going to go look for where he stopped. Tango Lima Lima. He was behind this uh, house back here. Ten four, thank you. Thank you, sir. Tango thirty three. Just be advised, play view on the passenger front seat. Large amount of marijuana. Marijuana. Okay, that's right. Perfect. That is why. Three four. We broke our control mode. Uh, there's supposedly a large amount of marijuana inside of the vehicle. He's stating he has no idea what we're talking about. Doesn't want to explain why he's hiding behind this house. Or why I'm 100% positive that that's who I was chasing. Hey, Mike. He's suspended. All right. He's 
Okay. Let's go back to the car and see if we can find this large amount of marijuana. Where's the uh, weed at? It's put in the tent. Put it's a big bag and then you gotta put it in the bag. It's a play boost. Yeah. Oh, on the passenger seat right here. Nice. Uh, decent Good. amount of marijuana. It's individually packaged, apparently for sale. And then a uh, much larger bag. It's probably at least 20 grams. Not bad. Was, Explains why you're in. He made it more than obvious that he did not want me behind his vehicle. Okay, it's his mom's car. And what he said to me was this. That he'll give you a full statement of why he was driving the car, why he ran, all his weed, as long as we don't forfeit his mom's car. Ten minutes ago, he didn't even want to say he was even driving the car. This is the marijuana that was located inside the vehicle. You see a fairly large stash here. But... Uh, What's going to get them is the individually packaged, looks like little dime bags, nick bags. Got a total. Looks like... About 15 individually packaged. Uh, the problem with them being individually packaged for resale is that it's going to be a felony charge which would obviously give us rights for uh, seizing the car. That would explain his reason for running. Originally, you were trying to tell me that wasn't you driving that I saw get out of the driver's side of the car, run. Yeah, my mom will call me. All right, so you were driving your mom's car. Can you run me through it? Because I'm going to want, I got to be the one to tell the story here. And I certainly don't want to put anything against you don't deserve. Yeah, you see me at the stop sign. I made a left. You made a U-turn. I pulled up. I got out. That's when you cut on the lights. I went around the corner. So why were you trying to avoid me? I mean, you were sitting well, in the middle of the I, street. I pulled in before you even cut off the lights. Is there any reason why you were trying to avoid me? I mean, would that large amount of weed on the front seat have anything to do with it? Bro, I smoke weed, bro. You smoke weed? All right. What about the little baggies you got packaged in there? What's that I about? I smoke weed, bro. You got the felony charges on you already. If there's something that you want to do about that, you have to give us something. It's an exchange system. I did wrong, bro. Nobody else ain't do wrong, bro. Why tell them somebody else, bro? They ain't do wrong, bro. I did wrong, bro. You know what I'm saying? All right, Adrian. Being a police officer is something I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Been working here for about a little over three years now. Love Boynton. Love coming to work. People say that all the time, but... I truly do like this place. It's definitely a melting pot of cultures and people here, and uh, it makes for uh, an interesting day and or night at any given time. We're on our way to a animal complaint call. Seems that there's a, a huge python in someone's house. Approximately 12 feet long. So we're, uh, we're gonna go over there and check that out and see what... They're like, shh, shh, shh. Let's do it for one night, so. You wanna see it? I don't know, what, what, are, we, what are we looking at? Python. Python? I think. Is it yours? No. Oh, it's outside? Yeah, it's outside. It's, um... Well, you can see the the body is, is behind here. I don't know. If behind. Yeah, I see it. You see it? Yeah, he's going this way. Yeah, he's going that way. Do you know who Snake it is? No, no. no. probably is, about 12 feet. It looks like. Do you guys have a garbage bag, like a like a big black garbage bag or something like that, or an old pillowcase? Fish and wildlife are on their way. They are. Yeah. When when did you guys call them? They they'll be here in like 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Then we'll just wait for them. Yeah. Yeah, we can put it in a bag if you guys got one. Is that a python, though? Yeah, it looks like a boa. Here's his head right here. He looks domesticated. Why don't you just grab it, go in there and get him? Yeah, how long is he? His tail is right. Yeah, he's huge. Kimball, you want to bag him? Yeah. You want to open the bag and I'll, I'll grab him or what? Oh. Okay. Right. Well, I'll bag. Whatever you want to do. Let me pull him out. All right, he's starting up. Okay, call him back. All right, That's keep the light on. He's right here. Good. Don't strike us. He's, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Watch, watch. There's nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> watch. 
Someone get the bag. Perfect, perfect. Oh, you had him. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where his head's at, but what I want to do is I want to slide him from the bag into the pillowcase. So I don't want him to suffocate, but I don't know where his head's at. That's the, that's the only tough part here. This pillowcase really isn't big enough. You can get some air out of that plastic. Bag. Where's his head at? There's his head right there. His head's right there. Hold on. Just get it underneath there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, get him. All right, pull the bag. Pull the garbage bag. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, there's a side, there's a side. All right. Here, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, that's good. It's somebody's pet, probably uh, got too big and didn't want to feed them any more rabbits or couldn't bear the sight of seeing that, so they just let them go. Yeah, very, uh, very common household pet, but then, like the iguanas, people got tired of keeping them around the house and uh, ended up just letting them go in people's backyards. And in the tropical climate of Florida, they take over and reproduce so so how did you guys find that uh, thing sitting in the bushes driving back from the game uh-huh and it was actually laying in the street oh, it was in the I street couldn't see the head uh-huh I thought it was like a palm frond or something because it looked like you know the pointy thing right right that it started to move so how you feel now that he's bagged in a little I wonder where the mother is. Case. The mother? Yeah. Ah, well, they usually don't travel in packs, I don't think. I hope not. It's just scary. <laughs> it's scary. It's the first one you've seen like that? Yeah. In the neighborhood yeah, or any, anywhere else? Like, like in yeah. the wild, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Corals, we, uh, they're probably king snakes, but... Yeah, grass, so yeah. Those, yeah, they're always in the grass doing something. What's up, boss? What's up? The head's down here. Huh? The head's down here in the front. Man, is he fat? Yeah, he's a fat. Yeah, he's a fat one. Nice. That's longer than eight feet, huh? Oh, yeah. Twelve feet. He's like twelve, yeah. Twelve feet. There it is. He's not gonna hurt you, <laughs> huh? He's somebody's pet. <laughs> somebody's pet. Yeah. He's not our pet. Key word in there, somebody. Yeah. Hey, ain't mine. Hold on. Hurt okay, I got the I got the back of the cage. Tilt it down just a little bit. Tilt it down. There you go. Smell that cat. Oh, there's a. You guys getting a lot of these calls lately or no? But uh, what we'll do is we'll take this one back to uh, one of the pet shops and let them scan them, and find out because they're required to have pet tags in them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like he's a very aggressive, so it must be somebody's pet. Yeah. Ah. All right, guys. Thanks, boss. As you said, they're getting more and more calls every day on them. This won't be the last we see of a boa in the uh, local neighborhoods. I like this job a lot. You get to take a guy off the street for a murder warrant or, you know, a sexual assault warrant or something like that. Or, being out here on the street, it's, this is where it starts. This is where a lot of detective work stems from. Is, uh, we're the first ones there. Uh, 
your homicide units and stuff like that, not taking anything from them, but, you know, uh, when we get out there, it had just happened, so. Ah, he ran that stop sign. So we're gonna see what their deal is. This vehicle stopped a stop, ran a stop sign. So we're gonna stop him and see what the deal is with him. What's going on, fellas? Reason to stop you? You didn't. Uh, you didn't stop at that stop sign back there. I didn't. You just rolled right through it. You got a driver's license and insurance on you? I got my. I ain't got a driver's license, sir. Why are you driving? I went to go get my driver's license, sir, and they told me I, I can't do it. Why? Because I have a warrant. But for what? The, the the warrants out of Florida. For what? I went to go. What's the warrant for? It's for uh. Grand Theft Auto out of Florida. Mm -hmm. Is it open right now? Yes, sir, but they won't. I went to the DMV and they put me in handcuffs, but they won't take me to jail for it. Okay. Why? They didn't confirm your warrant or what? They said that uh, they won't extradite me out of there. Okay. Go ahead and hop on out for me. Chance of Pionic. Maybe left hand. Maybe other one. Come on over here. Lean up against this car here. Lean up against the car. Go ahead and hop on out, bro. Walk back over here. Get up there next to you, buddy. <clears throat> Walk backwards. Keep your hands on the car. Do you have ID on you? No, sir. Excuse me? No, sir. Uh, I left it at my mom's. Don't come off of that car for no reason at all. You come off again, I'm going to put you on the floor. You understand? Yes, sir. May I have that left hand? May I have the other one? Come on back over here. You have problems walking or something? No, these, these cuffs are tight. Come on back over here. Kick your sandal off, bro. Mm -hmm. Kick your sandals off. Kick the other one off. Lift up the bottom of your feet. Let me see your feet. The other one. Okay. That's why. Ugh. Good move, bud. Go ahead and slide your sandals back on, bud. You come off that car, I'm going to tase you. You understand? You understand me? I said don't come off of that car. You understand? Come on back over here. Hop in and have a seat. He was holding that. That's why he was walking funny. Anything in that car you might want to tell me about? Not that I know of, sir. Not that you know of? There, there shouldn't be nothing in that car, sir. Shouldn't be? There isn't nothing in that car, sir. I'll rephrase okay. it. Okay. Your buddy's, oh, your buddy's pills. Oh. Didn't think I was going to find them. Come on. Walk around this way. Walk around this way. The passenger. I get the passenger out, and he's walking funny. He stuffed some pills in his sandal trying to hide them from me. I hadn't, I hadn't uh, gone in the car yet. Hey, Bo, I have some bad news for you, Chief. I found the rest of your pills. He had these in his, the driver's side on the seat. 
Looks like he tried to stuff him in between the seats when we turned around on him. He's got, he had these so on his side. Got your codones? Yeah, these are yeah. codones. So, so, so I'm going to call poison control and fire. Both of them. Just to check this thing out. Double check the numbers. Yeah, hey, could you run through it for me? I, I, I don't know if he stuffed anything, but let me call and get the initial charge. If we're going to jail, then my real name's Robbie. Uh, so, you don't know your real So, you lied to me about your name the first time. I got traffic warrants. I was going to take care of my warrants this coming up weekend because, because I'm on probation. He was going to take care of his warrants this weekend. I'm going to get him out, Brian. We'll put him over there in your car? Yeah. My guy, the one I had has an ID. Okay. Go ahead and hop out. Okay, 24 records want to move up and check. Turns out this guy's having an identity crisis. And it's because he's got warrants, which makes him fail to ID fugitive, which is another charge. Go ahead and slide on. Slide over. At the Beltway, he said he's got a Houston, Texas sticker on the back. Hey, I don't know if uh, if they've explained to you what's going on. Have they told you what's going on? No? Okay. Both of you are under arrest for uh, possession of a dangerous drug. Was that a felony? They'll explain it to you when you see a judge later on. 132 in Bush, I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint, 132 in Bush, covers code 3. Thanks, Ted. One man, two lives. The perfect con. Lone Star. Fox Premier Week begins September 20th. location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Here at the Rio Grande City Station, the border between Mexico and Texas is the, the Rio Grande River. We're responsible for guarding 68 miles of border between Mexico and Texas. Our central mission is the detection, prevention, and apprehension of undocumented aliens, drug smugglers, and terrorists. We're up against a billion dollar, very dangerous business. They're at it every day. And so are we. Hey, listen up, guys. Today we're going to target Zone 4. They're moving narcotics through that area. And we all know how they operate. We're going to try to take down the driver, the load vehicle, and the narcotics. As soon as anybody sees any scouts or any type of activity, you need to let us know as soon as possible. Is everybody ready to roll? Yes, sir. Let's go. Romeo 182, go ahead. Okay, right now we're placing our agents in strategic positions around the uh, border. Their job is to call out any traffic, any rafts coming from Mexico. And also they need to keep an eye on the U.S. side to see if any vehicles are going to drop down to those areas. We have all our guys on the ground right now in uh, concealed positions. We're just going to wait till the, the bad guys make their move. Romeo 5-5, five, five, Romeo 2 eight, six. Just for info, I got some uh, some chatter going on on the south side, and I can hear a couple of next tells going off. Copy. Romeo 286, 10-4. 10-4, I copy. You got some scouts in the area. 10-4. Okay, our agents are picking up uh, activity on the south side from the uh, drug smuggling organizations. They have, uh, they're talking right now, right on the river's edge on the Mexican side, and it looks like uh, they're going to make their move here any minute now. Romeo 5-5, We got a white Ford Focus hatchback. 10-4. 
Vehicles loaded, go north. 10 4, all units, vehicles going north right now. Three thirty-six. Uh, we're on our way down. Uh, we're after the vehicle right now. Stand by. He should be two vehicles in front of us. In front of us. Focus right there. Ten one. Okay, this is the vehicle they called out. We're gonna check it out right now. To see if there's anything in this vehicle. From a POE, be advised, we might have a white Focus heading back south. He looks like it's going to the to the purple apartment. It's going down to the purple apartment. We're calling the agents that uh, on south. the river. Try to apprehend the driver. This vehicle doesn't want to Copy. stop right now. He's going to turn south on uh, Purple Apartments area. Stay clear from the vehicle. Monica, since it's going to your 20, come out and go to the Purple Apartment. Yeah, this vehicle is not going to stop right now. He's trying Let to find a place to, to bail. He's going to bail. Ready, get ready. He's going to bail. Let me out. Let me out. Go, 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 go. Use Border Patrol, you're under arrest. Pull mano atrás, mano atrás, pull mano atrás, pull mano atrás. I got the cuffs, you got them? Eh, pédense. ¿Qué onda, carnal? Calmado, calmado, carnal. Ya le había hablado, ¿qué? ¿A quién, a quién? For the hood. Estoy jalando con la gente, y ustedes. There's a dope. Hey, bring him over here. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Bring him over here. Come here. Come here. ¿Qué pasó? What's going on? Where were you taking him? 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 A una tienda. Where? To a store? Sí, una store ahí tiene. How much money were they going to pay for that? Me iban a dar como mil dólares. They were going to give him $1,000 for that load that he's got, that narcotic load that he has. Moving narcotics is illegal. Uh-huh. You're going to jail for a long time now. <laughs> Let's see if we can get in there and... Yep, it's packed pretty tight, so they're going to be pretty heavy. We're looking at about 30-pound bundle here, 20, 20 pounds. Yeah, it's real tight. Looking at about 20-pound bundles. 13 bundles. It looks like marijuana, but we won't find out till we get to the station and do a field test on it. Cuidado con la cabeza. Listo. Okay. We're going to take him back and get him processed. This narcotic, see how much we got? All righty. Right now we're weighing the narcotics so we can see how much to charge them with. Is that it? 281 pounds. Right now we're doing a test kit just to make sure that uh, it is, in fact, marijuana. What we're looking for in this test kit is for it to turn a certain color. It's turning purple already. It's turning Tested purple. Positive for, um, there you go. It turned purple. Active ingredient in marijuana. Don't move your hand, just leave your hand real loose, I'll do everything. This is his third apprehension for moving narcotics. On the other apprehension, Singer, today he was a driver. I guess he thinks he's moving up in the world, but it looks like he's gonna get a lot more time for this. Vente para acá, señor. Come over here. Sí, ahorita damos chance de hablar con otra gente. Y right now, just stay here. Now, we got to call DEA, see what DEA wants to do with him. I'm pretty sure they want to interview him and get all the information on where he got the dope and where he was taking it. I've been a CPP officer for uh, six years now. Started my career in Long Beach, California at the seaport. Now I'm at the Nogales Port of Entry. And our main job here is to prevent uh, terrorism and other threats from coming into the United States. So we're going to screen 
of vehicles and persons. Here. Right now, we're at the Deacon City Port of Entry. Um, we have intel on this uh, this particular train that some of the cement hoppers stayed in some uh, part of Mexico they wasn't supposed to be in. Stayed there a couple of uh, extra days. All right, let's head out to Rio Rico and inspect the train. We just arrived at the Rio Rico uh, rail yard. We're waiting for the train to arrive. We had some uh, inconsistencies with the, the cement hoppers. So we're just gonna go ahead and wait for them to get here. We need to do an inspection of the, the train itself. There's a large stretch of track between Nogales and Rio Rico. A lot of uh, undocumented aliens like to uh, hitch a ride on the train from Nogales up to Rio Rico itself. They'll put anything from uh, narcotics or they'll smuggle themselves on their train. So we're gonna go ahead and do an inspection of the train now. This is the train that's coming in from Nogales right now. Uh, the rail team noticed some inconsistencies in the cement carts. This guy either had dope on it before it reached Nogales or it has dope on it now. This is uh, one of the ways that we gotta try to beat them. They're always trying to beat us. So it's like Easter. They hide it, we gotta try to find it. There we go. They're jumping. Go, go. Right now we got a couple of undocumented aliens that just jumped off the train right there. We got two of them running in the brush. We'll try to see if we can get them right here. Homie, we got two bodies on the east side. Just run the uh, jump the fence. No, dude. Pursue these undocumented aliens back to the train track, and a lot of times they, they like to uh, double back and head back towards the trains. Uh, we got another team that's going to go ahead and go and finish uh, checking the train, and we'll just wait here and hopefully uh, George gets to uh, flush these uh, two undocumented aliens back towards us. We are one in custody. Avalos, he's over here at the fence. I said, no se mueve. No te mueves. No te mueves. No me le otro. Cállate. Cuidado de que este está We got him. We have one red jacket in custody. That should be both of them. Go for it. Everybody come to the tracks. Everybody come to the tracks. Come on. 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 We just ran this one, he ran directly towards us. So now we got the two in custody. We are not done with that train. We need to check the cement on that train. Stand by. Tonight! Take over from me. Hey, you got him? I'm gonna go give uh, Brister a hand, get this other guy over the fence. Mira, no corre. Entiendes? You were in jail before. Huh? Antes tu en el cárcel. You were deported before. You understand English? A little bit. Yeah? Were you ever in jail in the United States? Yeah. When? Uh, Where? One month. Cuando? Uh, you were in jail 15 days ago? Yeah. 
sí, no sí. te mueve tu, tu mano, ¿entiendes? Okay. CCA. CCA. Sí. ¿Dónde está? En uh, Florida. He was in Florence prison. 15 days ago, he just got deported. Now he's on his way back. ¿Qué onda va ahorita? Phoenix. No, a Tucson. A Tucson. He's en route back to Tucson. ¿Tengo familia en Tucson o qué? His wife and his two kids are in uh, Tucson. <sighs> Nunca tengo problemas con la ley. Uh, no. Let me get your cuss, sir. Pongo tus manos atrás. Atrás de tu espalda. So we'll hand them over to BP. Border Patrol will then take uh, custody of them. Probably send them up to see a judge because this is his uh, being deported. They gotta go check that. Keeps getting caught. It's not very lucky. That's just one more job from customs. We wear many hats. Right now it just happens to be uh, handling with uh, undocumented aliens. Border Patrol will take them down to their station and uh, see if they're going to hit them with the re-entry at the deport, or if not, they're just going to send them back to Mexico tonight. I work for U.S. Customs and Border Protection here at Miami International Airport. We receive millions of people a year. 99% of the people are legitimate travelers, but I'm looking for that 1% who's not. Those are the people I'm interested in, whether they're terrorists, drug smugglers, or just bringing contraband that's prohibited from entering the United States. This flight is from Port of Spain, Trinidad. It's a high-risk flight for narcotics for us. Recently, we've seen a trend of body carriers loaded bags filled with narcotics from this country. Right now, we're going to go meet the passengers prior to them reaching passport control. Passports, please. When was the last time you were here? September. September. Two weeks. Thank you. Thanks. How you doing, sir? You live in Jacksonville? Yeah. How are you getting there from here? I got a ride. As soon as I get out. You have somebody waiting for you? Mm -hmm. How long were you in Trinidad on this trip? About four days. Four days? Have you been there before? Yeah. When? Um, like, a couple months. October. How much money do you have with you today? Oh, about a hundred and something left. I'll give you something left. How many bags do you have downstairs? One. Just one? All right. Give me a favor. Just wait right here. I'll be right back with you. Are you traveling with anyone else today? No. You by yourself? All right. Just wait right there. This is the passenger that has been identified as possibly in high risk for importing narcotics. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk him downstairs, ask him a couple questions, grab his bag. He says he only has one. So right. we'll call, grab his bag. I'll find out he's only got one checked in. Okay. Let's go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. You right this way. We're gonna do is we're gonna escort you downstairs. Mm -hmm. Grab your bag mm -hmm. and talk to you for a little bit, and we'll get you out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, he's processing now through immigration right now. He shows uh, kind of perspiration, sweating. Uh, looks like a body carrier, probably. His story doesn't sound too good. He's not sure where he stayed. He went with $300. He's coming back with about $160 for three days travel in another country. That's a little bit, you know, you spend a lot more than that. But we'll verify his story a little bit more when we get downstairs. Thank you, sir. All right, all right, this way. This way and then turn left. Well, who paid for your ticket? Uh, who paid for your ticket? Uh, a friend of yours? What's your friend's name? James. Dennis? Dennis what? I don't know the last name. You're not sure of his last name? Friend of the family? He stays here. He lives where? In uh, Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. Why did you... Are you going home now or are you going to go visit Dennis? I'm going to visit him. All right, all right. Your bag now is going to be on that first day. She said it's a go. It looks good. She's showing a lot of nervous tendencies right now. For someone to be looking for one bag, he's looked at a blue one, he's looked at a green one, he's looked at a black one, different sizes. To me, I don't can manage what is running through his head, but uh, as soon as we get a, a call from outside, we'll grab his bag and take him back there and see what's going on. Bye, CJ. 
Yeah. 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 This is your bag? Yeah. How do you know it's yours? Okay. All right. All right. Right this way, follow us. All right, grab your bag. This bag belongs to you? Yes. All right. Is it locked? No. Just going to have a seat? I'm going to do a quick bag exam. You went down to Trinidad for four days, and your friend Dennis paid for your ticket, right? Yeah. Do you know his address here? I don't know. I know where he stays at, but I don't know the, the address. I just know. Where does he stay? In Fort Lauderdale. Where in Fort Lauderdale? It's big. I forgot. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give Dennis a call. I'll be right back with you. Hello, Dennis? How you doing? This is Officer Vargas with U.S. Cups and Border Protection here in Miami. Are you expecting somebody today? No? You're not waiting for your boy, Sam? You're not going to give Sam a ride? No? Do you know Samuel? So how does he have your name and number? All right. Thanks for your cooperation. Uh -huh, bye. Went ahead and conducted a baggage exam, which was negative for any type of contraband. We performed a personal search on him that was negative, which is starting to lead us to believe that he may have swallowed some narcotics. All right. I tried calling all those phone numbers that you gave us. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows you. Your friends have disowned you. Mm -hmm. They don't even know that you exist. You know, we think you swallowed the drugs, plain and simple. What we want to do is take you to the hospital. You get the x-ray of your, your stomach. Okay? And that's the only way for you to, to get out of this. Okay. Go to stand up, please. Just going to pick your pants up. Okay. You're going to start walking forward and follow your officer. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and escort him to the hospital. He's gonna stay there for as long, however long it takes for him to, to have three bowel movements. And at any time he can go ahead and choose to go ahead and take the x-ray exam, which would speed up his process if he does not have narcotics within his stomach. Our suspect is arriving from Jackson Memorial Hospital. It's positive as an internal carrier. So we're gonna bring him in now and finish off our seizure and turn him over to ICE agents as we get inside. Who initially stated that he did not swallow any type of narcotics. We took him to the hospital for a monitored bowel movement. The next day he consented to an x-ray, which was positive for foreign bodies in his alimentary canal. There's a total of 96 and the tested positive for cocaine. Okay, all right, let's swim. These are some of the pellets that he has passed. If you take a look at here, one of the pellets had started to unravel and actually could have killed him because it wasn't packaged properly. If he would have gotten the cocaine directly into his blood system from his stomach, he would have maybe had about three or four minutes the most to, to survive. He took a big risk. We're gonna go ahead and process all the stuff and then somebody from Immigration and Customs Enforcement is going to come in and speak with you, and it's going to be in their hands now. 132 in Bush, I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint, 132 in Bush, covers code 3. Thanks, Ted. Get it 2514, can transmit on tech. Viewer discretion is advised.
Cops is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I work for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I've been on almost 12 years now. Well, I grew up in Las Vegas pretty much from uh, about the third grade on. I've lived here almost my whole life. I really like the area. I mean, there's so much to do around here from, you know, you got a lake nearby, the mountains if you want, like snow skiing, stuff like that. So. I said something for a from the south from the area. Apparently there's a couple guys fist fighting over here on the side of the road. Yeah, they're still going at it. Control 3 DB60, put me on a 416 in front of the Office Max on Rainbow, best of the West. Get in front of the car. Cool. Stand in front of the car. Cool. Put your hands behind your back. Drop the lighter. What's going on? Well, homie, Shut up. You you Shut up. Shut up. I ain't robbing him, homie. Put your palms together. You got anything on you're not supposed to have? Take a step back and spread your feet. You mind if I check you real quick? Man, go ahead, check you. I'm cool, man. Call 652, come at him. Hey, man, don't be throwing my phone like that. Look, relax. Man, that's my phone. Really? Have a seat. Spread your feet. You got anything on you're not supposed to have? Yes, I'm going to check you real quick. Go right ahead. Okay. Put your hands behind your back. Yes, sir. Put your palms together. How do you guys know each other? You want the honest to answer? I'm talking to you, yeah. Tried to buy some weed from him and his friend earlier. They took off my money. Okay. So that's what you consider a robbery? Yeah. Okay. They took my money. Okay. All right, have a seat. Yes, sir. Stand up. Walk back to that car right there. Tell me what happened. You were trying to what? Trying to find a nickel sack of marijuana. Okay. Sack. Right. Saw him and his friends sitting on a thing. I asked them if they knew where to get some. They're like, yeah, let me call my guy. Called him up. Said, all right, uh, I'm going to go. He went up to the guy's place, apparently. And around the corner, I didn't see him actually walk into the place. With the money, the other friend stayed with him. How much money did you give him? Five bucks. Okay. Uh, about 10 minutes later, uh, his friend got a call on the phone. Apparently it was him saying, yeah, guy rolled into a blunt, just go to the second uh, stairs to go get it. I went over there, there's no one there. I knew on the way over there that I was probably getting, that I was probably already getting jacked. Right. No one's there, so I walked back to see if maybe, you know, guy taking a different route, whatever, they were gone. Looked around for about 20 minutes trying to find them, nothing. Walked over here and started reading in Barnes and Noble. Came outside, had a cigarette rolled. Turned to this guy, didn't even recognize him at first. Asked if he had a cigarette. In front of the store? Right here. Oh, okay. Uh, I asked if he had a lighter, sorry. So I could light my cigarette and then I noticed. So so this dude just happened to be walking down the street. And I I noticed who he was after I asked for the, for the lighter. I'm like, okay. weren't you the guy that just robbed me? He's like, yeah, I am. I'm like, where's my money? He's like, I don't got it. I'm like, where is it? I don't got it. That's not where I asked. Where's it at? He's down there. He's coming with it. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. F you then. He's like, well, what? He gets all loaded up. And what does that mean? All swollen in the chest. Okay. You know, like he's trying to scare me off. Okay. I went up to him, got in his face. You, you know, give me my money. He swung at me. I swung back. And that's pretty much when you pulled up. And here we are. Yep. So what are you doing? Why are you out here? I'm walking. To where? To my house. From where? From school. From school? Yeah. School got out a little bit ago. Yeah, and then I uh, went to the homie's house. So what's taking so long? 
I don't know. I just didn't want to go home to her. See, that's why you get into trouble. Apparently, this kid's on probation for for what? Graffiti? Yeah. When was that? How long are you on probation? Huh? How long are you on probation? You check in with your PO? Yeah. How often? Every day. Every day? Every day. Just by phone? Yup. But your, your PO gonna think about this? No, I ain't, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I you didn't do anything wrong? No. See, you could have done it a better way. But you didn't. Nah, That's why you're in handcuffs. For real? For reals. So what, what, what was I supposed to do? Just run away? Or? Just say, hey, I don't know you. Keep walking. That's it. It would have been that simple. Joseph. Stand up here. Stand right here for me. Yes, sir. You're getting a citation for a fray, it's called, participating in a fight. Yes, sir. Obviously, you know it's not uh, cool to stand on the sidewalk and duke it out with somebody. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a citation today. Your court date's on here. I'm going to have you sign it. It's not an admission that you're guilty. It's just a promise to appear in court. Okay? Okay. All right. When I take this left cuff off, I want you to put it in your hand on the back of your head, okay? Yes, sir. Spread your fingers out for me. Your fingers, there you go. All right. All right. So basically, you're taking me to jail because your feelings got hurt. That's why you're taking me to jail. Your you're going to jail hurt. because your feelings got hurt. You don't so want to you work got, with you're us. You're taking me to jail for, for jail to make yourself make me feel better. Jail bed. Just had these two fighting it out here on the sidewalk. Apparently, it was a weed deal gone bad. One kid gave the other one the money to go get his weed and never showed back up. And they just happened to cross paths again. So we're going to go ahead and cite the the adult and release him. The juveniles uh, got quite a history. He's on probation, so we're going to go ahead and book him into the uh, juvenile detention center. When I'm on patrol, I understand my main priority is to respond to 911 calls and take reports for people, but uh, when we got free time, I really like to go out there and contact some of the individuals, the problem areas uh, in Portland and, you know, look for stolen, uh, take drugs off the street, find weapons and things of that sort. 965, check a plate. Possibly a rolling. 965, go ahead. Willie, Willie, Lincoln, Willie. It's stopping. Stand by. Willie, Lincoln, Willie. The uh, Toyota Camry 1057. Stolen. Kill, put your hands up! Everyone put their hands up! I got Occupy times two compliant so far. Exit the vehicle, keep your hands up. Put your hands as high as you can. Sidestep to your left very slowly. Keep going. You will now take commands from another officer. You will do exactly what they say. Go down on your belly, keep your hands out away from your body. Look to your right. We believe that you're armed. If you make a move for a gun, we're gonna shoot you. <laughs> Passenger, sidestep to your left, very slowly. Stop. Drop down to your belly, keep your hands straight out. Put your palms up, cross your ankles, put your right ear on the ground. You see, it's a Toyota, but we have three, looks like Honda keys that uh, have all been shaved down and used, uh, probably used uh, to steal cars. And now we have an Acura key right here, uh, two Acura keys, and uh, looks like another Toyota key, so. And you see all the cars the so too. far recovered. Let's see what else we got. Some more jiggle keys. Yeah, those keys were found on the si passenger, or the driver's side, same thing. Okay. Confirmed by Vin? It's confirmed by Vin, and it's not on the hot sheet because it was taken less than an hour ago at a grocery. Okay, well, let's see what she has to say. Hi, ma'am. How long have you known him for? Uh, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe a little less. I don't know. About time. six months, though? Give or take, I think. What's his name? 
Um, Uno, they call him Uno. They call him Uno? Yeah. Has he always owned that car? No, I believe he just, uh, I don't know if he just purchased it or if he's borrowing it, I'm not sure. You're not sure he didn't say anything about the car? No. Didn't say anything about uh, where he was coming from or? Mm. Mm -mm. Okay, did you see him driving it with the keys or anything like that? Yeah, he had a key. He had a key? Yeah. Okay, are any of your keys in the car or any of your possessions in the car? No, my purse is outside. Your and purse I is have outside? A couple of things that are my brother's in there that I was going to take to him. What are those things? Uh, the screwdriver, a little pouch of glasses, which is my pouch, and I believe uh, wire cutters. I don't know. Um, okay, what, what's in the pouches? Uh, the pouch, I think, I believe the keys. If it, you know, it's totally okay. You're the passenger. If you knew that it was stolen, or he said that he stole it, or something, it's okay to it's okay to tell he me. He didn't say anything. Like yeah. I said, I wasn't. I was barely in the car. Do you know much about stolen vehicles? My brother was in there for that, and he just got out. So I figure the keys and stuff that it, he wants from me are probably for that. But like I said, for your brother or, for, or him? Oh, my brother. Okay. My brother. What's Mike. your brother's name? Mike. Mike. Yeah. And uh. He just got out, I believe. And he was. In jail for stealing cars? Yeah, he was in there for that. Hey, sir. How's it going? What's your name? Unesimo. Uh, do they call you Uno? Um, yeah. What would you like me to call you? Uno. Uno? Yeah. Okay, Uno. So, uh, whose car is that? I don't know. Actually, um, yes, I bought it from two, two, three, day, three days ago. Three days ago? Yeah. How, how many keys do you own uh, for this car and... And in addition to, uh, like, I don't know, house keys or whatever. How many keys did I find in the car? I don't know. I had, uh, I had like, a, and the key that I told her, like, he gave me, I don't know how many were there, but they were, like, I don't know, like, I think five, I think. Maybe five? Maybe. Yeah. Okay, there's probably about maybe two dozen keys in there, maybe. Here's the problem with what you're telling me, okay? The car that you're driving... The owner reported it stole. So oh, you were you were driving and you were in possession of a stolen vehicle. Is that a, is that a surprise? I mean, just be honest with me. Did you know it was stolen? Did you um, think it could be stolen? Well, I wasn't too sure. Cause you I, wasn't like, too I sure. Just bought it on the street. You just bought it on the street three days ago. Here's the other problem. Okay, I talked to the owner. The owner just reported the car stolen and said it was stolen within the hour. That means when I contacted you, it was stolen maybe 30 minutes before I saw you. So that means that the, the owner had his car and then someone stole it and then I found you in it. All within probably about a half hour. And you're telling me that you bought this car three days ago. The car was stolen an hour ago, buddy. And you're in it, and I found you in it. Okay? And that's all we got. The three days ago, the owner had the car three days ago. He had it two days ago. He had it two hours ago. So I know you didn't have it. Okay? Your passenger already told me that her brother was in jail for stealing cars. She has the jiggle keys. Okay? It's not a big deal. We're going to get through it. So I just need the truth. All right, um, in that case... Yeah, the, the 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 keys that were in there, and um, uh, I talked to one of my buddies, and they said uh, they want to buy the keys. Do you think that it's someone would be upset if you stole their car? Um, actually, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, you know, uh, this is the first damn car that I ever took, and you know, like that, I didn't know I was. So this is the first car you stole? Yeah, I mean it. I appreciate your honesty, buddy. All right. Okay. Put your feet back in. I'll come talk to you in a minute. Hey, how you doing? Hi. So after talking to you uh, and talking to uh, Uno, uh, Uno has admitted to me uh, stealing the car tonight. I'm going to charge you guys both with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and uh, possession of a stolen vehicle. Originally, I'm from New York. I've been down here about 15 years. I came down here after I got out of the Navy. Being six years in government service, I figured this would be the thing to do for me. I enjoy doing it. I've been doing it for 12 years here in North Fort Myers, Florida. 78-1921. We're heading towards a call. Two individuals inside a parking lot of a strip mall, possibly using drugs. One 
possibly he's passed out from the use. Alpha SA Foley County, I'm 97 the area. Your plane is going to be in a gold Ford Explorer behind Applebee's. Gold or bronze Grand Marquis. Come on. Alpha SA Foley County, what's the 28 on that vehicle? How you doing? Hey. You doing all right? Good what are you all doing here? I'm here to go the plane. Get him out. Come on out for a second. Hands on the foot. Go ahead and step back over here. What are you guys doing here? I was going through the book. Okay. You're not doing any drugs or anything like that? No. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm okay. looking. I just bought that brand new phone. Right. Is there anything I'm illegal in the car? No. Is this your vehicle? Yes. Is it registered to you? Yes. Okay, you mind if I look inside? No. Yes. Okay, hang out right here. We're good to go. She gave consent. I'll go ahead and look. Okay. What would that be? You said it's water. I know. You want to what would it be? We got a test for that, though? We were using the mesh test. Okay. Hey, Dawn, come here. What's in that vial? Uh, water. It's just water. There's nothing else in there? No. So that's not any kind of narcotic, GHB, or anything like that? So it's going to test as water? Oh, yeah. You're positive? Yeah. Why is it in the container? I don't know. It's just water. Whose is it? I his, I think. It's his, not yours? So you're, you're not sure what it is, then? I know. He says water. It's water. Does that seem odd to you? I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Turn around for me. Have a seat. There's no needles in here? No. Well, what happened to the needle you were using? I wasn't using uh, needle. Someone saw you, okay? I was not okay. using a needle. Or him. Okay. I know. I came up here. I fell asleep. I know. Okay. Somebody said that they came up here. I Where's the needle? You know what I'm talking about. So when we find the junk in the car, it's not yours. Is that what you're saying? It must be hers? It's not going to be on that side of the car? And here we go. So we've got three, four, five needles, some cotton swabs. A spoon that's burned on the bottom here. We've got a lighter. We've got a cut straw. We've got a complete kit here for shooting heroin. She has track marks on her arm. Let's be someone indicative of uh, using needles. She also has got a straw here. I'm sure we'll test positive for the pills that she's crushing up. and They crush the pills up and snort them. Better high than taking them. Let's go talk to them. Hey, Don. Who's Emily? Who? My daughter. Mm, talk up, I can't hear you. My daughter. Okay. That's yeah. hers? Go ahead, just leave that there, please. three kids. You have three? Yes. Whose medications are these? I have not a clue. They're in your purse? Uh, no. You don't know how it got in your purse? No, actually, I don't. Okay. Did he put it in your purse? I have no clue whose that is. Okay. Whose bottle of morphine is that? Bottle of what? Morphine. Morphine? Yeah. You need to test that. That's water. Hmm? They just did test it. They did did you guys just test that? that? That's water. Huh? You tested that? That's, That's water. That's water. That's water. Yes. It's water. Looks like morphine to me. You don't know what these are? No, I don't. I got two times, and I got two in my house. But you don't have them on you? No, I didn't bring a bottle in, sir. How'd this get in her pocketbook? I put it in there. You put it in there? So these are yours? Yeah. So you have a permission... You have a prescription for Oxycontin. Yeah, I've already uh, beat the charge once. Okay. What are you taking these for? My knee, for my back. Okay, talk up. Huh? For, for what? For my bad knee, for my bad back. Okay. I was in a bad car accident, sir. Okay. Why are you taking them, injecting them, and not taking them orally? I do take them orally. Okay, but you don't inject them? No. Where are the injection marks from your arm from? From water. From water? You inject water in your arms? Water doesn't get you high. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up for me. Right now you're under arrest for possession of opium derivatives and possession of narcotics equipment.
make sure my phone gets put in my property. This one on your ear here? No, the camouflage phone that's on the dash. The what? The camouflage phone that's on the dash. Okay. Sir. That way when I get out, I can make my phone call. Okay. You can also get phone numbers out of the phone when you get into the jail. Okay. All right, come on over here with me. Black car's right over here. All right, go ahead and have a seat. All right, listen, just let them finish doing what they're doing. Sit down, and we're going to go ahead and cut you loose. We're going to take a little information from you, okay? Yeah, have a seat. Hey. Whose syringes and cotton and spoon? Are these yours or are they hers? They're all mine. They're all yours? They're all mine. How long, how long have you been shooting this stuff? Mm, don't know. You don't know? Sorry. Why do you shoot water? Give me an explanation and it's I believe rush. it. Huh? It's a rush. To shoot water? Yeah. You ever been charged with drug paraphernalia? No. Nope. Never? No. Nope. Okay. That's what this is. Everything in here is drug paraphernalia. The syringes and cotton and spoon. All right, well, that's what you're being arrested for, okay? Yep. All right. One goes to jail, the other one goes home. 132 in Bush, I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint, 132 in Bush, coverage code 3. Thanks, Ted. Direct 2514, can't transmit on tech 2. Sorry for the inter- is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. We're heading out to the southwest part of the valley to meet up with one of my other squads. Uh, they've been working a case for a few weeks now involving an 18-year-old kid who's been selling ecstasy to one of our female undercover officers. Now we're going to uh, establish a, a location and hopefully uh, buy a boat of ecstasy from this crook. The street term for a thousand pills of ecstasy is a boat. You can make anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars with these pills. And the suspect said that in order for him to sell that much, he needs to bring his source of supply with him because there's that much money involved. And if these guys are dealing in boats of ecstasy and this amount of money, there's going to be some folks there that's going to show up with guns besides us. All right, we're going to be doing a UC. Uh, the plan is Chris is supposed to meet our UC. The other suspect is going to drive in. Best case scenario is uh, Chris gets in the car. This suspect comes up and does the deal, and then we'll bust him up. The guy was real cool with the undercover last time. The last time when this guy had the gun, he carried it in his waistband. So he, although he says he's not going to bring it, but that's where he had it last time. Hey, what's going on? How things looking? Just so I got this straight, I'm meeting you, and then your boy's coming to us? Okay, cool. So, uh, price is still good at 55, right? Okay, see you soon. What he said was, he'll just come see me and uh, get the money, go up to the car, and do it that way. Just keep the tight string on that cash. If it's gonna get messed up, it's gonna be messed up with that money. Okay. All right? You ready? When we're dealing with dope dealers, anything's possible. But when we're dealing with two dope dealers and then one guy who doesn't trust the other one and they've been robbing each other, they're carrying guns. The potential for a problem is magnified. Okay, a girl should be uh, entering the lot here off the, uh, from the south side. She'll be traveling south to north. She's going to be pumping a call into the crook here pretty quick, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get the ball rolling on this deal. All right, they're close. Uh, Chris is in a white Chevy Veil, and the main guy should be uh, on his way also. Okay, per our girl, there's three people in the uh, Chevy Vale, three people in the car. Mark in front of the van, uh, just north of that gray van. Chris is coming up to the car. It's a white Mustang. Yeah. Let's go on. See you soon, bro. What's up? What's up? I have a usual guy, but then he, he kept telling me six, and I was like, hey, 
you know, can you do it for 55? And they're like, yeah, I can do it for 55, no problem. Hey, we think we're still waiting on the main supplier, Mike, so uh, we'll see what happens if he's got the D or not. This guy right here, I just met him. There he is. I met him at a rave once. I used to have a car like that, it's like Trans Am. Silver Trans Am. It's parked nose in to our girl. Can you do me a favor and, like, go get me a sample? It's fine. Make sure it's okay. I don't know if he'll do that. He might get sketched like he really might. Well, but... dude, last time I got ripped off for 30. So. Oh, no, these are, these are way two different people. Oh, I know, I know, but he'll understand. I'll go You know I got the money. You know I do, so you've seen it. Uh, the UC told him last time she was ripped off, so she doesn't want to give up the money. All right, it's coming back. Um, hey, he just said that. I was like, she wants a sandwich. He said, you know, I'll just go deal with her. So that's him. His name's Mike. Okay. I guess he's just gonna come see you. Hold on. So I'll see you next time. All right, I'll call you. All right. Thanks, man. It sounds like a mean guy is getting in our girl's car. He's got a uh, black briefcase. What's up? How's it going? It's good. Lisa. Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah, You're a Chris, me, too? They call me Matt. Cool, cool. So do you actually have the cash for it? I do have a cash for it. Yeah. Do you have my stuff? Yes, I do. All right. Can I take a peek and I'll get you your cash? Uh, what do you, uh, how many are you looking for? You a thousand? The boat? Yeah. You're not a cop, are you? No, I'm not a cop. I gotta ask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm hell lit. Watch for a runner. He's got his foot outside the car. I'm just gonna do it like this. Just give me your money. Just give me your money? I'm not kidding. You. Okay, well, it's in the trunk. Huh? No, it's in your purse. Give me the money. Dude, what is this? Give me the money and I don't have to do it. Or I can just take your whole purse. It sounds like he's ripping her. Move in. You got 50 seconds. Alright, yeah. Take the whole purse? Take the whole purse. Yeah. Whatever, dude. Alright. Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Get us! Get out of car! Sorry. Get your hands behind your back now. I'm sorry. Get your hands behind your back. Somebody grab that veil, find that veil. Get that veil, stop! They gave me, they, sir, they, I'm just saying, sir. They gave me a, they gave me a gun and told me if I didn't do it that they were gonna kill me. I promise you, sir. They told me that they were gonna kill me. They, they got, they're gonna kill me. I'll tell you exactly who it was, sir, I promise you. Oh, he's saying that he was forced to do it. He's out here crying like a baby, you know, and, uh, uh, we took down the secondary vehicle just around the block from here, and everything went down safe. Everybody's cool. I know Chris. He was just like, hey, can you do me a favor? I was like, yeah. He's like, run me a Smith's. He said he was just going to buy a couple grams of weed, and that was it. And then when I get in the car, he pulls a gun on me, tells me straight up, he goes, you're going to do this for me. He's like, I will kill you. He's like, I know where you live, everything like that. I didn't want to go through with it at all, sir. I really didn't. I was scared out of my Mine. Sorry, sorry to cuss at you. I'm really sorry. When did they pull the gun on you and tell you to do that? About 30 minutes ago, sir. 40 About... minutes ago. Okay. What are they saying? Our main guy, Chris, basically admits the whole thing. Says that he had to deal with our UC for the boat. Couldn't come up with it. Came down here, explained it to the suspect that's over there, the guy that tried to rob our UC. Explained the situation. He said, well, let's just rob her then and get all the money. He said that? Yeah. How old are you? 17. 17. What were you guys thinking, man? I just wanted to make some money. Just wanted to make some money. It didn't matter how you're going to do it. You're just going to rob a girl. It didn't matter, right? And you understand now she's a police officer? Yes, sir. All right. You're going to be looking at a whole lot of charges, kid. Good luck. Yeah. The gun, was it loaded at all? Um, well, it had seven in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. Nothing in the chamber? Okay. Cool. Sounds good. We appreciate you helping us. No problem. He's gonna to go to jail. Uh, he's got a list of uh, felonies he's gonna be facing now. Armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Uh, he's actually gonna go for the conspiracy to uh, sell narcotics, because even though he didn't bring it, he agreed to do the deal and he showed up for that. Uh, he was carrying a concealed weapon uh, on him. Um, he wasn't a felon prior to this, but tonight, you know, he's gonna be in that category starting right now. I decided to get into law enforcement because growing up I was always active in sports. And to me, this job incorporates a lot of that with the teamwork and camaraderie. When I finished college, I moved to Florida two and a half years ago. I decided to come work for the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, and I love coming to work every single day. My corporal just made a traffic stop, and he asked for another unit, so we're right down the street. We're going to help him out. He's right ahead of us.
You got your uh, your license on your. I just gave him my license. Huh? Come in. I just gave him my license. Come here. Don't be moving around, man. Come out. I'm gonna ask you one time before you come out of here, man. You're moving around an awful lot. When I went to stop you, what you got? What you got? Hey, hey, don't move. Get out the car. Don't, Get out don't the car. reach here, your man. hand. Don't move. Don't move. What were you shoving, man? What were you shoving? Tell me it's right now. 24. Hey. Keep your hands up there, like he said. I understand the law, and you need to do what you got to do. Okay. Okay, that's why I'm telling my nephew he's young. He's your nephew? He's scared. Okay. 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 When he see the police, he gets scared. I don't been to prison three times. I know what time. Okay. We don't have no drugs, no yeah, nothing, in, nothing illegal. Have... Yeah, you do have. I drugs. don't know. If he had some on him, that's something I didn't know. Okay. Well, let, we're gonna talk to both of y'all. Okay. okay. We're gonna take a quick look through this car when the corporal approached. He saw the passenger reaching under the seat, and. uh Subsequently, he has a little bit of weed on him, so we're going to make sure there's no weapons and see if we can find any more drugs. Take a look at any places that they're known to hide drugs. They like to stuff it under the seat. I got their IDs. You don't find anything else in there? That's just a cigarette. This is, this is, this is, all he's, this is what he's trying to do. He was worried about that? He was worried about that, and, he, and, and when I stopped him, he started shoving, I could tell he was shoving something up underneath him, and I'm thinking, what's this guy doing? Because they came out of a hole over there. And I went, something's up, and they don't live up here. Pop the trunk. They're not from up here. You got a light on there? There's a shirt. It's a gun. You got a gun? Yeah, it's a gun. Okay, don't yeah, don't touch it now. Let me see it. Yeah, he's a he's a convicted felon. Okay, watch yourself. The muzzle's pointed your way, so back off of it. Let me see it. He's actually on probation. The driver? Yeah, the he driver. He said he he said he just got out of prison. Vehicle's registered to him. Not one in the chamber. It's clear. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to run this. Let me secure this thing. It's a kill okay. Let me secure it in the back. I'm going to run his status, make sure he doesn't have his civil rights uh, reinstated to him. And um, if not, he's a uh, convicted felon in possession. He's going to take the ride for the felony. Okay. And, uh, let me go back into serial number and go from there. Do you want to go through the car one more time to thoroughly? Got some more weed there. What did you say to me? There's more weed in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up. Pull up. What's your name? Uh, Tommy. So, I can't hear you. Tommy. Tommy? Do you want to talk to us about the gun? What gun? There's a gun in the trunk of that car. Okay. Okay. So if you want to sit here and play like you don't know about a no, gun, I'm not gonna play listen to me. I'm not that gonna gun play. is going to get sent for fingerprints. And I want you to do that. Okay. Please. Because I know for a fact my, my fingerprints ain't on that gun because I don't know none. So tell me how. So if 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 my ne okay now listen, I'm riding with people now. If 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 if, if that's what he done, I really will find out the truth later on in court. Like do you think your nephew would do something like that? I don't Does know. Does he drive that car? I don't know. I want to see because he, we, that's that's my family. Okay, I understand that. That's my family. He can go in and out that car as he please. You feel me? Uh, I feel you, but I'm also telling you that can't you're the registered owner of that car and you're responsible for whatever's in it. Yeah. yeah you, you understand that? Yeah, you're right. So I'm just I'm just telling you I'm like it is. I'm hoping that a person would be honest and, and, and face well, up we're to Well, we're going to ask him, okay? So no, I would hope I, that... I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even play like that. Uh, being in prison three times, I wouldn't even play like that. Okay? okay? We'll, we'll ask him, and I'll let you know what he says. Okay? Just hang tight for me, all right? There ain't no weed allowed in the state of Florida. I don't know what you're thinking, okay? Mm -hmm. You're under arrest for that. I might be able to give you a ticket and let you walk out of here. Okay, you've been cooperative with me. You're not on probation. You don't got no warrants. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I'm, okay? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm you get that? Yes, sir. Now, the next question is, is when we go to search the vehicle, we find a little bit more weed and we find a handgun. You know anything about that? No, sir. I, I, Now's your chance to become clean, man, because no, I got sir. you. I just I just jumped in the car. You, know? you just got yeah, in the car. He was, just take, he was taking me home. Did he say anything to you when I got up behind you? No, sir. He didn't say nothing I to you just, when I turned no, the lights sir. on? I just seen lights and that's And all, then what? Sir. That's all. And then when you asked me for my ID, I put my ID out and then... It just 
And that's when you panicked. Yeah, it hit me. Then I had, to, you know what I'm saying? I had a little bag of weed. I had a little weed on you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I it just hit me. And then, and then that's when I kind of like. You yeah, know? you kind of you kind of kind of hit the panic button on me, didn't yeah, you? Yes, sir. Yeah. I ain't never seen that gun before, sir. You good? Yes, sir. All right, let me see what I can work out here, man. As far as getting you an NTA and get you out of here, okay? Yes, we'll try to ROR you. Okay. Give you a court date. I, I, I guess what's going on with, with him, sir? Well, he's under arrest. Yes, sir. He's a, he's a felon in possession of a firearm, so he's he's taking a ride, okay? Okay. All right, man. Watch All your right. knee. All right. All right, hang tight. Yeah, I, I just knew that he was up to something, and I, I figured there was probably going to be something more in the vehicle. You know, he made a big deal out of that little baggie, but I knew there was something more. But the bottom line is, is they're both going to jail for possession. One's going to jail for a uh, felon in possession of a handgun. We got a gun off the street. Good, deal. All right. Good job. I became a police officer in 2002. Um, I grew up with my dad being a police officer. He was a military police in El Paso, Texas. Then he got transferred to Fort Polk. Being a police officer is just part of our family. I mean, if you're in our family, you're a cop. So it's great. I love it. 443. 443. I'm one of some of the travel hosts. Um, I want to check out this vehicle. They have two people in it. And um, they're blacked out, so I want to see what's going on. I got one trying to exit the vehicle right now. Car. Put your hands on my car. Relax right there. Relax right there, please. Because I'm telling you to. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Step out. Face the car. Face the car. Relax. You got anybody else in there? Relax right there. Put your hands behind your back. Right now, you're being simply detained. You have the right to remain silent. I think you say it can't be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to have an attorney. While you're being questioned, if you cannot afford an attorney, it won't be appointed to you. You got anything on you that's going to poke, stick me, hurt me whatsoever? Mm. What's this right here? Not you mind if I take it out? Can I? Yes, sir. All right. You got ID in here? Yes, sir. What's going on back here, man? Picked up this chick at a gas station a while ago. Mm-hmm. And what uh, happened? And she grabbed my thing and mm -hmm. I didn't know. Uh, and what? What chick grabs your thing, what you gonna do, man? I don't know what you did. I'm asking, we're not asking me questions, I'm asking you questions. So what happened? I was gonna grab a Coke and she had things. Seven. Look, look, look. I'm going to ask you a straight-up question. How much did you pay? And what did you pay for? I ain't giving it up. How much did you pay for? She's go he's going to tell me the truth. So, I suggest you tell me the truth. Okay? I ain't giving him the money. Huh? I ain't giving him the money. What sexual act occurred? Just playing with my thing. Just playing with your thing? Okay. So, what was the amount agreement? There was no amount of agreement. There was no amount of agreement. Okay, look. But go ahead and tell me the truth. Tell me how much you pay and what you pay for. She said 20 and I didn't give her nothing yet. But y'all made the agreement for $20, right? Correct? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. And we're going to put you in the backseat of my car, all right? Hey, I'm going to put him in your car. Hey, put him in your car, please. All right. What's going on, sir? Nothing too much. Tell me the agreement, tell me the price, tell me where you picked you up, everything. Hey, so hold on, hold on. I'm not sure this other officer advised you of your rights, but I'm going oh, to, okay? Right, right. Anytime during questioning, you have the right to refuse to make any statements or answer any of my questions. You understand your rights? Yes, sir. All right, what happened? Nothing, he picked me up. Where? I was standing out by uh, one of my friends up on Cedar Crest. On Cedar Crest? Yes. Okay. Asked, you live right off of Cedar Crest, right? Yes. Okay. And he asked if I needed a ride. Because mm -hmm. I was trying to come get me a motel. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, he offered me some money because he wanted to play with me. He wanted to what? He wanted to play with me. Play with you? How much did he offer you? He offered me $60. $60 to play with you? Yeah, but I didn't get the money. You didn't get the money? But did he touch you yet? Huh? No. No. I drove up too soon? Huh? I drove up too soon? No, because I, I was going to get me a motel room. Okay. But y'all did have an agreement for a sexual act for $60. Well, he, he wanted to. 
Well, you agreed to it. I didn't agree to it, but he had But you got in the truck and got over here with him. So pretty much that's agreeing to it. Actually, he told me that when we got here. Okay. And did you say no, sir, and get out and get out the truck? No, you did not. Correct. Well, I told him that I was coming to talk to you when y'all pulled up. So he asked you that when he saw me. No. So he saw the police no, and then said, no, "Well, oh, he, by the way, I'm gonna give you sixty dollars no, no, for a he, sex." No, he was talking to me, but when I saw y'all pull up, I said, "Well, I want to go talk to him." Okay, you done told me I can't have enough right now to arrest you. So I just know. tell me the truth, please. I am telling you the truth. All right, $60 no, for what? For him to touch you, right? Yeah, he wanted to give me some um, He wanted to give you? Yeah, but okay. we, we didn't have, we didn't have we, I mean, we didn't do anything. Okay. And you agreed to it? Huh? You agreed to it? I hadn't agreed. I, had, I mean, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll, you was going to let him, right? Somebody was going to be. All right, thank you. You're saying tight right there, right? You're going to let me go? We got a white male and a black male. Inside vehicle, and um, they both uh, admitted to uh, making a um, an agreement for money for sex. Um, right now, we're going to arrest them both for um, prostitution, solicitation, and prostitution. Hey, Sean. Sorry. Did you give her the money that you had on you? Or did you already give her the $20? Well, how were you going to pay her? I my ATM. Oh, you was going to go to the ATM afterwards? Correct? Or no? Yeah? 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 Okay. You know when you don't pay a prostitute, especially a male prostitute of that size, you know what could happen to you, man? If you're out here trying to play games with these people, they're going to hurt you, Sean. You understand me? Yes, sir. Look at me, Sean. I hope you do understand me, because these people do not take that as a game. You understand? Yes, sir. That was a big man in, in your truck, man. He would have hurt you, Sean. Understand me? Yes. All right. He was six foot, 225. That's a big guy. He would have became a victim instead of a suspect. 132 in Bush. I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint. 132 in Bush. Covers code three. Six, ten. Six, 25, 14, 10, transmit on tech. Don't miss television's biggest night. The 63rd Primetime Emmys, live Sunday, September 18th on...